Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at here on this fine Wednesday, April 23rd, 2025. May is coming up uh, super soon here. 10, 16 a.m., that's local time, California time. Uh, latest activity shows, uh, looks like uh, where's a one, there's a 1 1.6 somewhere hiding out here in the green flag. But notice on the Earthquake 3D globe, quite a bit of movement going on there across the uh, Turkey area. Let's go ahead and check this out real quick. Way up north here, northwestern area of Turkey, just outside the Istanbul area. 6.2 earthquake striking uh, a number of hours ago. Looks like about 8 hours, 7 to 8 hours or so ago. Uh, around the Sea of Mar Maramara, I believe that's how you pronounce that. If not, please correct me. Either way, a decent earthquake, fairly shallow as well, just about 25, uh, maybe 20 to 40 miles here to the southwest here of uh, the region. Pretty large shaker, a uh, number of aftershocks in there as well with uh, at least two five-pointers. Now, a little bit of information here on this um, earthquake. Shows it was felt fairly broadly over the area, uh, mostly around the epicenter region, of course. Uh, some pager systems up in the yellow as far as ec uh, estimated economic losses and potential uh, fatalities in there as well. That's a, a, definitely a large earthquake. I looked up historical data in the area of 6.0 and above historically. And uh, here's today's quake, this morning's quake, I should say. Prior to that, a little bit of movement back over here. You know, back in 2022, there was a uh, there was a fairly large amount of earthquake activity back here a couple years ago. Didn't include that, but uh, movement out here seems to show some six pointers out here on occasion every few years or so. Specifically around this area of the Sea of Maramara, got uh, let's see what we got 6.1 back in 1963. A lot of time has passed here. 1964. A little bit larger quake there, 1953, 1912 for a 7.2. So, uh, you know, you look at these models here and, uh, well, a lot of time has passed. So that's allowed a lot of strain to build up in the area. And uh, that is just the latest six-pointer here so far this year for 2025. Been quite active out here in the last couple of weeks as far as you know sevens and uh some sixes out there still watching and waiting for an eight pointer out here uh, i say that because we should see at least one eight pointer every year if not every year then every other year and uh, our last one was back in 2021 so here we are you know four years later somewhere around there not going to do the exact uh you know days and whatnot but uh yeah, we, we should definitely should see some larger activity out here. So we'll continue to watch that. And that could happen at any given time, any given place out here as well. So obviously that's shown up here on the Earthquake 3D globe there, all that movement. And look at the aftershock sequences out there. Quite a few twos, quite a few threes in there as well. USGS is only going to show the uh, magnitudes 4.5 and above. So that's why it only looked like there was five earthquakes in total tally out there. But there's a lot more. And that's very common. Uh, for the uh, aftershock sequence there following a 5.2. Uh, far as um, the rest of the area goes here, New Zealand, a little deeper movement underneath North Island, 4.4. A lot of older activity here from yesterday. Remember, we had a number of fives out here, including some uh, 6.0 earthquake activity around the um, Philippines area, just south there of the Philippines. That uh, looks like it has since died off a little bit in that area, but... Uh, Still got uh, some broad-scale movement taking place. It does look like things have shifted here up the Java Trench over across the uh, uh, Himalaya area and uh, just outside Nepal. Quite a few uh, forests stirring up there today. Japan pretty quiet up north here. One earthquake from last night, a little 4.4. Uh, looks like a little deeper earthquake activity here into the northern end of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench with a 3.8. That's fairly deep. Um... 5.1 out in Australia yesterday. That's pretty quite pretty crazy. Let me move this here a little bit. Looks like our time period is past the 24-hour mark. So there we go. I like to try to keep the last 24 hours here of earthquake uh, data on the globe. Occasionally, um, it, it just gets adjusted there. Uh, a little bit of aftershock activity in that uh, Australia earthquake 2.7. 
Uh, let's check out California, see what we got going on here for the uh, southern portion of the state. Anything above 2.5? No, not a whole lot. Mostly, uh, well, all microquake activity out here today. A little bit of movement along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. A couple of earthquakes here around the Garlock Fault shear zone and the Ridgecrest region. As far as any major swarming going on here across Southern California, I don't see it. But again, you know, it's been amplified out here in the last few weeks and last few months as well, uh, even in the last year. So we'll continue to keep an eye on Southern California. It goes through these little quiet periods and then things kick up. Uh, Washington and Oregon, a handful of smaller quakes up there. Nothing, uh, nothing big. Just uh, some very small, very small microquake activity out there today. Uh, let's see, up into the uh, Montana area, scattered, scattered small microquake activity there. Nothing new. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Let's go double check that here. Got uh, not a whole lot going on. There's the six pointer, that 6.2 that struck in Turkey this morning. That signature did show up quite nicely uh, on the seismograph station there at Yellowstone National Park, right? It was not felt, but just goes to show you how these uh, very sensitive seismic uh, monitoring systems there can pick up seismic waves thousands of miles away, right? Showed up uh, on the majority of the stations there, which would coincide with that time frame of the 6.2 in Turkey. As far as local seismic activity goes, uh, let's see what we got here. I'm not really seeing a whole lot. Maybe a couple smaller spikes here. Very small. Those are probably well below the one one range. USGS really not uh, not really caring about those super small earthquakes. Nothing showing up there on the map. But overall, Yellowstone is pretty quiet. I've been seeing a, you know, a number of videos out here talking about how this is going to blow, you know, very soon. Oh my gosh, it's not. I guarantee you, there would be signs leading up to it, and not just small microquake activity. We would be looking at uh, an enormous amount of earthquake activity, probably fours and fives, even some 6.0 magnitude earthquakes there uh, repeatedly after one after another, and the. The uh, GPS stations out here do not show anything of abnormal activity out here. If you look around the region, uh, this is uh, northwestern Wyoming. The caldera in itself here is uh, kind of outlined here. You can see it in somewhat of an oval fashion. And there's not a whole lot going on. Uh, some of this data is actually obviously old. Um, that's 2024. Uh, there would be a sharp rise right here in the vertical displacement. This is not just one of your little volcanoes. This is a super volcano up there, and it would obviously be showing. And that's offline. Um, that's old. There's the center portion of the caldera. So if you think about the center portion, that's where we should see the the most rise, right, as far as inflation goes. And, well... Huh, excuse me. This is an instrument adjustment right here, an antenna adjustment or some type of uh, replacement of the seismograph station that caused that. Uh, I mean, the GPS station, excuse me, that caused that sharp rise there. That is not inflation. That's a, a readjustment. But if you notice here, we've been going down, going down in terms of, well, this is deflation. And, um, you know, I, I think the last inflation that we had a little bit, periodically we get these seasonal um, inflation events. That's due to the uh, absorption of the snow melt and runoff and whatnot. The ground kind of acts as a sponge. So there'll be very small um, readings there on the graphs that would show, you know, some type of um, inflation. That's, but that's just seasonal. Uh, but I think the main or last... Um, Inflation time frame was back in like 2007, 2008. There was a little bit going on back there, uh, but, but it doesn't cover it here on this chart. But either way, you know, just going down. We would see this go up and up and up and up, along with increased earthquake activity before we see any signs that Yellowstone National Park super volcano area is unsettled. But right now, let's let it sleep. And that's exactly what it's doing. It could be like that for hundreds of years, thousands. 
Uh, oil fields out there in Texas, really nothing major going on aside from the typical gas and oil field earthquakes. Uh, one earthquake out in uh, Missouri from last night, Hartville, Missouri, a little 2.6. That sits right outside the new Madrid seismic zone here. That's Missouri. Some movement over here across the Tennessee area as well, but really nothing major going on. That's another intraplate boundary that's capable of producing some large earthquakes showing up here on the hazard map. Uh, 1811, 1812 had a number of mid to upper 7.0 earthquakes out here within a, I think it was about a year and a half time period. Uh, so, you know, a little bit of time has passed, almost over 200 years, obviously. And, you know, it's it's building up some uh, steam out there for the next series of large earthquakes. But the slip rate out here is quite low. So I'm not quite uh, certain that we're looking at any type of big earthquake activity anytime soon there. Just my observations. Uh, let's see, Alaska area still got a little bit of movement out there. Also some uh, north of Anchorage. Not Nothing to do with Mount Spur over here. That's still just kind of sitting over there. Uh, but we do have a little earthquake swarm here just off the Castle Mountain Fault, north of Anchorage here. Uh, looks like a number of smaller quakes, 4.5. So that was from yesterday. number of aftershock sequences there hitting that area. This fault system right here, obviously capable of producing some larger quakes. This one up north here as well. Uh, but got a little swarm going on there following that 4.5. We'll continue to watch that. Alaska is a very active area for earthquake activity. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii. Let's go back over here. <laughs> Tone of voice because it's like, that's not the page I wanted. I wanted the USGS page, but occasionally you get these things popping up here. Um, let's see, is this the most recent data? Refresh that, double check. Looks like uh, there's our eruption here from um, yesterday. This is the past two days here. Looks like a uh, very short-lived eruption. Starting to go back up here. This is the uh, vertical displacement. Fairly lengthy buildup as far as the uh, inflation goes and the accumulated magma below the summit area of Kilauea Volcano. So we've seen a very sharp depletion event, depleted that magma, and now we're going back up. So it's a rinse and repeat cycle. I think we're at episode number 17, if I remember right, or 18 maybe. It's just been one right after another out here, and it's, I don't see any sign of it um, changing. This could continue like this for who knows on how long, as long as we don't end up with some type of blockage down there. Episode 18. So in the next episode here in a couple days will be episode 19. But uh, it ended abruptly at 128 Hawaii time there yesterday. So oh, uh, we'll check back on this here in a couple days and uh, probably see another eruption out here. But as uh, far as the visual goes there at the summit area, a lot of volcanic gases there, which is expected there following uh, the recent eruption. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Anything major going on here around the globe? Looks a little quiet out here across the uh, west coast right now, but that's like I say, that's not going to change. Uh, that's <laughs> that's going to change. It's not going to stay quiet for long. Let's go ahead and check out space weather activity. See if anything major is going on in the sun, which uh, looks like a little sea flare activity right now from this little sunspot right here. It looks like a little bit of a uh, flaring going on. I believe that's one of the newer ones that has popped up out of the blue. Going to be 4070 here, I believe. This is from last night, an older image. The most recent image here shows, uh, man, we just got a lot of low-grade sunspots here. Really nothing of impressive nature. It's actually a little quiet. But uh, this is the area that has thrown off some sea flare activity. Really not expecting much from that region or any other areas out here far as solar major solar flares go. I don't even see uh, really anything capable of producing any M-flare activity. So the threat will remain low. I'm issuing a 1% chance or less for, less for an X-flare. I don't really see any X-flare probability. M-flare at 40%. That's probably reasonable. Uh, a little face on the sun there it looks like. Two eyes and a huge coronal hole. 
That uh, was, well, I think that was a pretty much a dud, right? They're calling for a G2-class storm. That never materialized. Seen some auroras up there at the extreme higher latitudes, you know, normal areas. But, uh, yeah, that uh, just was a dud. <clears throat> Still somewhat facing us here, but uh, here's the latest imagery. It's pointed south, though. If you look here, there's too much of a off, off of the Earth-Sun plane. This is all going south of us. Sun's not very happy right now. Uh, no major solar flares, no major roars there in the forecast. They're still calling what looks like some unsettled conditions here over the next couple nights, just in case maybe that decides to, uh, you know, interfere here on the planet. But um, I'm not really counting much on that. It's like I said, it's well south of the Earth-Sun plane. Storm Prediction Center for severe weather here on the surface of the Earth. Well, got a slight risk out here. Look, kind of looks like a snake. Got uh, some tornado activity there around western Kansas. 5% chance there. That uh, is a decent little chance there, it looks like, around Garden City, Kansas. Got some wind. That's a little slow wind and some, um, come on, some hail threats in there as well. Nothing big, but uh, there's a little bit of severe weather risk today, so just keep your eyes on the sky as far as severe weather goes. Uh, coming up, we still have a, a chance there of it getting a little bit more interesting out there across Southern Plains here as we end April and begin May. Here's the uh, 23rd to the 29th here of April. Got uh, some severe weather, mostly over here across the uh, western areas of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas region. Um, and then as we enter into the first week of May, a lot of severe weather potential for Texas area. So we'll watch that uh, and see what uh, happens there as we head into the month of May already. That's crazy. Uh, let's check out the accumulated precipitation runs out here. See what we got from these storms kicking up. A lot of rain out there. A lot of these places need some rain here. Uh, Nebraska up here getting a little bit. That'll fill in eventually, I'm sure, as we get deeper into the uh, season. But uh, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, got a, a bunch of uh, decent rainfall accumulation rates out there. Even California out here, a little bit of rain returning to the area. I'm not expecting much here. This April and May are not our wet season months. All right, uh, what else we got out here, folks? Any, uh, I forgot to check these um, asteroid approaches here. See if we got anything of any uh, close approaches. This one's just under, well, it's 552,000 there. 83 foot airplane size asteroid, newly discovered as well, passing the planet today, but that's fairly safe. Here's a little bit closer one. 60 foot coming in tomorrow newly discovered asteroid as well it's a house size asteroid uh, but even then 245,000 miles there that's the closest approach uh, that is uh, just outside the average distance there between the earth and the moon so that's close but not one that would make me open up this orbital viewer and uh, you know check in detail as to how close this thing is coming so not really too concerned with that if you recall last year I think it was last year, last January or so, we had a, a very small asteroid come in within about 8,000 miles of the planet. So that was super close. Anything under 50,000 miles, then I'm going to be looking into this pretty closely. But uh, all of these are fairly safe for now, as far as passing distance goes. Uh, let's see here. I don't think there's anything else. Quick recap here of the uh, earthquake activity. Got one more earthquake here on the map since I've been uh, doing the update. A little 1.8 on the San Andreas Fault. We'll just continue to watch this here throughout the day. It's just a little, you know, there's always earthquake activity out here, but it's a little quiet out here for now. All right. Have a good one, folks. We'll see you guys out here a little bit later on. Uh, this afternoon or evening, and of course, unless something major happens. All right, have a good one out there. Stay safe.